Welcome back to part two of this tutorial on the relight effect inside of Resolve. Now, last time we did discuss a few things. We did discuss how to set it up and how to do a few things, okay? But this time I am going to show you instead what we can do to isolate specific portions of our character or of our background if needed. So I'm going to show you how quickly you can do that and how easy that is. So I'm here in the color page already. So this is the clip I'm going to be working with. So I'm going to find my hero frame, which is about here. Okay. This clip right here, that is my hero frame. So now I can come here. I haven't done anything yet because the image, as you can see it here, it's pretty balanced, pretty well. So I am going to rename this. This is going to be my, we can call it primaries, okay? Just for now. And then we are going to add, as we, two more nodes. The first node, it's going to be my surface map, okay? Over here surface map and the second one it's going to be my relight perfect so now that we have both of them I am going to bring this down here I am going to go on my effects and look for the relight effect okay and then drop that into my surface map and you can see that now we have more connections available as you can see and because we added our effects our relight effect and now here you can see that it loaded and it added map preview here. I am going now to say here, output surface map, just like we did last time. And so that outputs a surface map on our clip. Perfect. So now that we've done that, the next step is to add a relight also to my relight node and just wait a minute because this, as we said, takes a moment to process. And one thing that I forgot to say in the previous video is that you could technically also do add a relight only in one node, you don't necessarily need two nodes. But the problem with that is that you are going to have a much, much slower render time. This way, you're basically dividing sort of by adding two nodes, the computational time that Resolve takes to do that. So that is the reason why working this way sort of cuts off we splitting two parts. That's what we are doing. Anyway, so now that we have that, let me take this, the RGB output of my primaries is I'm going to connect it to the RGB input of my relight over here. And then I am going to take the RGB output of my surface map and go into the RGB second input of my relight. Okay, so we should have something like that now. Perfect. Now with that done, I'm going to come here where we see our relight now, since we did connect it, our surface to the RGB second input, instead of saying here surface map use internal, which would be the process, by the way, if you only did it in one node rather than two, you just keep it like this. But since we are doing it with two nodes and we did our surface map, we output it in here, what we're going to do is change the surface map from use internal over here to use input two. So we just discussed. Okay, so once you do that, once again, Resolve does take a minute to process all of that information. And now that it's done, what we can do is go through the light source that we want. So in this case, I'm going to go with the directional light. And you can see already that we have a big difference compared to the previous one. This was the point source. And this is the spotlight. Okay. So the difference between the point source and the spotlight is that this is as we explained last time, it's basically casting its light or the light is emitting into a specific region in our frame or spot in our frame, while the point source works a little bit different because you can move the light around, okay, and decide where you want it to fall and then go in and adjust the intensity as well. Either way, so I'm going to choose for this one the directional light. So now we have our directional light here. Now, the tutorial is about how do we isolate just the character. So say we want to light just a character, but we don't want to light the background or vice versa. But for this specific tutorial, I'm going to show you how just to light the character. So I'm going to go to my primaries, we can actually close the effects because we don't need anymore. And here are my primaries, I am going to go into my this tab right here, which is the magic mask. And over here, there is a few option, you can see here you have object mask and you have person mask, I'm going to click on person mask. And here on person now, I can come to the viewer. And basically, with the stroke, I can basically just paint over where I want to 
what I want to select, which in this case is this character. Now you can see that nothing is happening. You got to come here to where it says person mask. Okay. So you can toggle it or untoggle it. So in this case, you can see that this is toggled here. And then the second thing you have to do, if you come down here is toggle mask overlay. So I'm going to click that. We can see what we have selected. Now we also have the hand here, which is not yet selected. So I'm going to come and just another stroke just here. You can see that now we selected the hand only. All right. So now to have a more accurate mask around our subject, you can hear on quality, you have faster and better by selecting better, it would do a better refinement around our subject. In this case, I am not going to do that because it's just going to take forever. It's not going to play in real time. So I'm going to keep it here for faster just for this example. So you kind of understand the process behind what I'm exactly doing. So we have our subject selected now, hand, right? So we have what we need. And now all I have to do is here back on my notes, I am going to come on my primaries, I'm going to take the alpha output connected to the real lights alpha input. So now that what is going to do, it's going to carry over this information, my selection, my masking selection I've done of this character and carry it over to the real light. Perfect. So that's all you have to do. So now I'm going to come to my mask here on my relight. And now you can see what we have selected here. Now, once again, if you want to make a better selection, you can always come back to your primaries here. And once again, you can go here on better. I'm just not going to do it right now. It's just too much. All right. So now I'm back on my relight here and I'm going to open my effects. And now here I can obviously check my relight map preview. And you can see that what is going to be affected, it's what's in white. So all of this, it's going to be affected. So everything that we made a selection on, it's going to be affected by our light and everything that is this other color, matte color, that is not going to be affected, hence our background. So that is what's going to happen. So now what I can do is I can obviously adjust, you can see the brightness here right? So how bright we want it. Now, this is not actually adjusting the brightness. The brightness is actually adjusted by the gain and gamma. It's basically helping what the adjustments, the gamma and gain are going to do. And then we can also adjust our contrast. Okay. Just as we discussed last time. So in this case, I'm going to keep it to hundred, just like that. Then you have uh, other options here as well. Uh, I am not going to touch off for these options right now. Perfect. So now what I'm going to do is uncheck that. And what we can do is in fact, now, add, make it brighter. Okay. Like that. And even more sort of like that. And you can see that now we're lighting only our subject because if we go here in full screen, all right. So let me go back to my primaries because this is bothering me now. I am going to uncheck that. Okay. And I can, in fact, let's try better. Let's see how long would it take to do a better selection. Okay. Something like that. I can also, by the way, denoise this a bit here and add a little bit of a blur, right? So that should help a little bit, but I am going to go back here now. And I think I went too far <laughs> with the gain and gamma. So, um, I'm going to add a little bit of gamma here and a little bit of gain, not too much something like that. And now you can see that what is going to be affected in our image, it's going to be only the character and not the rest, as you can see, as I'm playing back. So this is the before, and this is the after you can see before and after. So we're lighting only our subject. Okay. Now, obviously this doesn't look as realistic because I am overdoing it. I mean, I am going too much with it. So you obviously have to be subtle. So that is what you can do. And then you can also like come here to your gamma and really add a little bit of a tinge of orange, right? So before and after you can see like what that's doing. Now, what's awesome about this is that you're lighting your subject, but what if I just want to light the background instead? right? I feel that my scene say was too low key. I want it to be a little more high key. I want my subject to be the same. I want to expose the background just as I've exposed my subject. So I don't want it to be this strong contrast and different. So you can do that very easily. You can come to your primaries here once again, and then on 
Here, when you're on your magic mask, there is a few toggles. One of them was the mask overlay, but the other one here is the invert mask. And what this is going to do now, look at the viewer here, it's going to, instead of selecting the subject, it's going to select the background instead. So we are going to invert it, okay? So look here and boom. There we go. Now, obviously the selection is not as accurate, so I would need to do a little bit more work, but this is just to show you, okay? This is the before and this is the after. So now what we did effectively, we basically added a light inside of our environment here, inside of our space pod. This is awesome because look at that. It's like almost turning on a light. So say you wanted that extra light or you underexposed or something. Now you can do this with this effect. And now in this case, I went a little bit towards the orange, but say it was a little bit like, like a colder light, something like that. All right, I'm going a little too much, but you get the point. You can basically decide how much and push and pull really. And so you have something like that. So this is the before and this is the after. Once again, you would need to do a better selection, obviously, but this is just to show you the possibilities and what you can do with the relight effect. And once again, it's only by connecting your last node you had, the last node's alpha output to your relight's alpha input. And that is how it carries over your selection. Now, another thing to understand here is that I had a question from one of the subscribers on my YouTube channel asking, what is exactly, is this working with also video clips or is it working only with stills? No, this does work with video clips, of course. The reason why I think a lot of people have been posting with stills, it's because this is such an intensive effect that as I said, does not play in real time. And it's very hard to show the full effect, if, especially if you're doing a live recording, obviously, if you're streaming live. But if you're curious and if you're interested to know how to actually apply some cool effects into video clips, please let me know in the comments down below and like this video. So I know that way that you really want to do that. But either way, you can do so much with this. And something that I didn't speak about last time is that every single slider here has a keyframe. So technically you can keyframe. So you can come here, keyframe it, then move the clip, say over here. See, now it's not playing back in time, but keyframe it again and then change the brightness. And there we go. You already did an on and off switch on and off like light effect. Then you can play with contrast and glossiness and specularity and shadow softness and all of that. So the, the possibilities, I mean, your imagination is the limit really. So there is so much you can do. And not just that, so you, everything is keyframable. So you can keyframe everything, but also you can also move a light in the background. You can move it across your frame or even have a light follow a subject. Say you have a subject that is moving and you want that light, almost like an eye light, right? On your subject, you can do that as well by having your light source following the subject. And how do you do that? Well, it's very simple. If you come down here on the light direction, and if we come to like, say a point source, okay? And a spotlight, what you would see is that they both have the source follows FX tracker and spot follows FX tracker. What that means is that if you add an FX tracker and you have this checked in, now that source or spotlight, right, up here, they will follow the FX tracker. So now technically, say you added, you tracked your subject, now that light is also gonna follow your subject, right? So that is awesome. But you can also do things in the background, as I said, have a light move in the background or many different scenes. So if you really want me to make a video about this and showing you the creative ways in which you can play with the light.